This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and Discord servers, on-screen shout outs, and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. Hey, what's up and welcome back to the rewatch series. I thought it'd be fitting for this video to drop at about 8 p.m. Eastern time on a Monday night, given that this game was played um, at 8.30, I believe, on a Monday night. So let's kind of talk about this one again. I know it's not the most glorious game to come back to on the Brown schedule, but I do think that this is a interesting game to talk about. Um, my first overall thoughts before I kind of get into the nitty gritty with what went down in this game. Um, defensively, this is one of those games I point to when I talk about how overrated the whole the Browns were a bad road defense thing was like how miss how misunderstood the defense was there. They weren't uh they weren't as great as they were at home on the road, but that's only because they were generational at home. They were just a really good defense on the road most of the time. Um, so I think a lot of the panic or the the panic out there about can this defense play well on the road is a bit overblown because you look at this game. I mean, the defense played tremendous. Um, and, and I thought that, you know, everybody, including the secondary, had a pretty damn good game in this one. Offensively, Watson, I felt like, was fine in the first half. Like, he wasn't, like, elite or anything like that. But he was contributing in the first half for sure. Um, third quarter, in the fourth quarter is where it gets iffy, man. Like he just, once Nick Chubb gets out of this game, you can tell the offense in total had a hard time adjusting. But I will say a lot of this gets thrown on Watson's shoulder because he's the highest played player on the offense and he's the quarterback. So a lot of that's fair. But this was a lot bigger than just Deshaun Watson, what went down on this offense. You know, I thought Wyatt Teller had a bad game. I thought for the most part, up until like the third, fourth quarter, uh, Elijah Moore had a pretty terrible game. Um, I thought Watson, you know, he wasn't great in this one. And he, I think they were leaky on the offensive line pretty much all game. And it really left them no room to kind of be what they wanted to be on offense, especially when they couldn't get that guaranteed yardage of running out Nick Chubb. And I think we'll learn as we do this rewatch is how important and how much we kind of undersold Nick Chubb's uh, contribution to this offense and how much we missed that throughout the year. I think also Watson's running was something that we missed, but let's kind of get into the nitty gritty with this game. Um, the game starts here with wild sequence um an immediate pick six here right the ball was tipped a lot was made of this on both sides look Watson's trying to run stick they're trying to isolate uh Alex Highsmith in coverage and they're gonna throw to Harrison Bryant to get a free easy five yards to start the game it's a pretty standard play call it's not like a bad play call it's not a bad thing that Harrison Bryant was in there because if you did have Jordan um, Atkins there at that spot, you probably don't get Alex Highsmith in coverage. They probably uh, check out of that and try to move into something else because they see that mismatch. So Harrison Bryant was who you had out there to try to take advantage of that mismatch. And I know people debate, should Harrison have caught it? Should Deshaun have thrown a better ball? Um, I think this is... There's another element in this that I think a lot of people miss. The ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage um, very slightly, but so, but definitely affected the path of the ball. So the ball is tipped, and then it goes out of range for Harrison Bryant. You would love for him to make that play, but I don't think you can expect Harrison Bryant 
to make that play. You would love for Watson to find a cleaner passing window. Um, and I think the burden of expectation for anybody to avoid that play is on Watson more so than it is Harrison Bryant. So boss tipped, it gets turned into a pick six. The game starts off on, 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 a, on, on, on terrible footing. Um, and the offense was out of rhythm when they came back out after that pick six. I thought Kevin did a great job. He called a timeout here because they couldn't even get the play call in. Um, you know, they were that out of sync when they came back on offense. But I think Kevin did a great job of getting the offense back in sync, right? He ran the ball a couple times with Nick Chubb. He had some short throws with Deshaun Watson. I believe he was 4-4 or 5-5 four or five or five on this drive for the bulk of it. And they really did a good job of moving the ball downfield. I believe they end this drive with a field goal. The reason it's a field goal instead of a touchdown, in my opinion, well, not in my opinion, DeWan Jones gets a holding call here that really stalls this drive out. Um, but still, even with that holding call, they're able to get a, a field goal. So, yes, you threw the pick six. Yes, you start this game off terribly. But you got points on the ensuing possession. So you mitigated the damage a little bit. And you demonstrated that you can move the ball on this Pittsburgh defense. So there are worse ways to come out of that situation. Then the defense does a great job getting a stop. Grant Delpit gets an interception here. And the drive after this interception by Grant Delpit is what will become the story of the fourth quarter and honestly the story of the game for the Cleveland Browns in this week two matchup because you get the pick six, you got some momentum after throw well, not the pick six. You you throw your pick six, but you get some momentum back, have a nice long scoring drive. Grant Delpit comes back on defense and gets an interception within the 20. So now you have great field position. You have the ability to kind of erase all the momentum that Pittsburgh got early in this game. And then this drive here, I'm gonna try to play all of it. This drive here is just missed opportunities galore. You get bad protections. You get bad throws by the quarterback. You get a missed field goal by the kicker. And you get nothing out of that interception that you got the ball like at the 25 or something like that. Um, and... If you watch this game longer, you know that in the fourth quarter, that's exactly what happened to them in the fourth quarter. I mean, just the story of this game is the Browns had so many chances to win this game, and they just never made the play. Now, big big picture thing, why I wouldn't be too concerned about it, is because we know that they figured it out by the end of the year even with Deshaun Watson they figured it out they figured it out with PJ Walker they figured it out with DTR they figured it out with Joe Flacco they figured out how to take advantage and win these games when the opportunities are there and they're not capitalizing on them but this is the first instance of the Browns being able to take control of the game being able to take momentum and instead of doing that in this game they miss all those opportunities and get nothing out of it um then the defense comes back out. The defense was stout, man. Just look at how these small guys on the the Browns defense just play and run support. It's beautiful to watch. I mean, it, it makes my heart warm. Like, look at this stuff. I know people be be pretty tough on, on uh, Greg Newsom, but when you see him be able to do stuff like this, when you see how JLK moves in, like, look at this lick that, that Grant Delphit takes um, on this play, and then he still kind of, affects the play there like that's just great football by some of your smaller guys here then the browns get the ball back on offense and you know again they start to build some momentum up right you get a great nice connection to coop on third down very nice throw and then nick chubb kind of just starts to take over this drive like he's incredible then when nick chubb's taking over the drive you get in the third down situation okay watson makes a play here and then oh elijah moore can't finish it right and look if this were david bell 
I wouldn't be upset. But Elijah Moore was somebody at that point in time, we had the expectation that he could make plays like this. And, you know, this isn't going to be the first time and the only time I talk about a play being there on third down and Elijah Moore not being able to make it in this game. And that ends up being a critical miss because it leads to a failed fourth down conversion because Watson runs up the middle and he gets the ball poked out of his uh, hand. So it ends up being a fumble. The Browns defense bails him out again. And look, that's what the Browns defense does. They bail out. You know, the Browns defense got got hella assets because they could just bail out anybody. But they bail him out again. And in a lot of different scenarios, we're at the end of the first quarter with this game. Outside the pick six, I think Watson was effective. The fumble they called, I don't think that was a fumble, but I don't see where it was recovered. Well, it was a fumble. Let me correct that. It was definitely a fumble. I don't see where he lost the ball. I thought he recovered it. And I thought there was evidence of that, but they said that Larry Joby covered it, which was nuts to me. Um, the defense was great. And like when Nick Chubb's there, with Deshaun Watson, I think they really do have something on offense that can be big. Now, the question is, is Deshaun Watson going to stay healthy? The question is, if Nick Chubb is going to stay healthy and what Nick Chubb's going to be after that injury. So we'll see what those two guys are. But, man, if those two could have stayed healthy this year, I think this team really could have went um, to the AFC Championship game, if not to the Super Bowl, because – the way that these two just continue to give each other more shots at making plays um, is something that was sorely missed uh, in the later part. And your ball control, you weren't going to turn the ball over a ton with these two guys because Nick Chubb's not a fumbler. Deshaun Watson takes care of the football. So it, 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 it watching these two games, the only like five quarters of the season where Nick Chubb and Watson are healthy at the same time, um, it, it, it is a glimpse into what could have been and hopefully what will be once they get back healthy. But man, that they if they could have stayed healthy, they had a chance here to do something special um, with that, those two in the backfield. Um, now, we, let's talk about the injury happens pretty soon here. When this happened, I'm not going to show footage of it because like why? But yeah, the injury happens to Nick Chubb. It didn't look crazy when you saw it, but we've seen the angles. Um, and just just to know how bad this injury is without seeing it, just listen to this crowd reaction from Pittsburgh Steelers fans when they see the replay on the big screen. I am told that the replay of Nick Chubb getting injured is not to be seen. Yeah, it's we're not going to show it. It's... Uh it's it's as bad as you can imagine absolutely brutal injury like if it were just a regular injury i don't think it saps the energy of the game from the cleveland Browns side but that injury definitely definitely took the browns out of it mentally now they were able to rally get a scramble drill find jerome ford on a touchdown and then watson converts on a two-point conversion so you know, they, they did a good job of that, but the team was obviously still in shock. Like, they're not even really celebrating that touchdown. They're not really getting all juiced stuff about the two-point conversion like they were earlier in the game. And then in the fog of that smoke where I think the Browns are just in shock about what happened, the Steelers get their first big play of the game and their first first down of the game in the second quarter. And it ends up, I don't think being a big deal because like the defensive line just takes over. Um, like look at the athleticism of this defensive line and just look what they're capable of doing, how how well that they can create pressure on one side, have somebody scrape, go backside and still finish the play. So if I were to point to the Browns struggles on offense, I, I would point to three people, Wyatt Teller, Deshaun Watson, Elijah Moore here, right? Those three could never be on sync at the same time. Thought Wyatt Teller had a rough night. Um, I thought Elijah Moore had a rough night. This is another play here where you need somebody like this is a good ball by Deshaun Watson and it should be a big play, but it's not. And instead of a first down and continuing to drive and putting pressure on Pittsburgh, it's another three and out back to back three and outs. Right. Um, and also to note on the other side of the ball, not to be too Brown centric, but Jalen Warren literally only reason why Pittsburgh is 
even close to being in this game at this point, like outside of the turnovers by the Cleveland Browns, um, because he's the only thing they had going for them offensively. Like anything impressive that the Steelers, I mean, the, yeah, that the Steelers did in the first half of this game, like you can point a line directly to Jalen Warren. Like here, he makes a big play on third and ten, which ends up being a huge play because right after that, because they got that first down, you know, when they didn't expect it, they've been converting third downs all game. They finally get one on a third and. 10 um and it's again by Jalen Warren because he got the other one in the last drive and because they get that conversion George Pickens scores on the next play and it ends up being a huge momentum swing for the Pittsburgh Steelers you flip over to the other side of the ball this is the third time we're going to talk about Elijah Moore not being able to make a play on third down um and he just has to make it and it's another three and out and that's three back to back three and outs. I think we have somehow undersold the importance of Nick Chubb to this football team because when he left, like part of it's shock. They're still shocked that that, that happened to him. But another part of it is they have no way to reliably get five yards on first down without Nick Chubb in the game. And that was an issue that they would deal with for the rest of the football season. Um, no matter who's the quarterback, no matter who was running the ball, they struggled to find a solution. Like eventually it got to the point to where they just ran stick and threw to David and Joku. But then once they got to the wild card game, that's that that tendency to go to that that much because they didn't have Nick Chubb ended up really hurting them against a Houston team that started to kind of take advantage of the Browns tendencies because they just didn't have that many options there because Nick Chubb went down um, in this game. The Browns are starting to get some momentum. David and Joker with a great play here to bring them out. They slump and, and they're driving down the field and you start to think, OK, we're building momentum. We're coming back. Um, then Wyatt Teller, I mean, not Wyatt Teller, J, TJ Watt takes over uh, this drive, right? Wyatt Teller kind of just watches Watt tip this ball for whatever reason. And look, I know we like the T Stiller fans and talk about how DeWine shut down TJ Watt. But we be lying when we be saying that DeWan Jones, like, shut him down. Did DeWan Jones did a good job in his first start against T.J. Watt that you can expect from Yes. Did DeWan Jones shut down T.J. Watt in this game? No, it's not even close. T.J. Watt was a huge impact on this game. Um, and in this drive alone, he, like, single-handedly erased uh, the chances that the Browns had at scoring um, on this drive. He gets a... PBU basically and then you know he, he basically single-handedly stalls out this drive so Watt was definitely impactful he did some of it on Dewan Jones Dewan got his licks in for sure he didn't just roll over he did a good job against him that you can expect from a rookie but I know this I know some of it's just trolling but some of us be dead serious acting like Dewan Jones shut him shut TJ Watt down in this game and that's just that's far from the truth like he did a good job on TJ when he had him, but TJ still kind of did his thing in this one. But now we're at halftime. And I mean, obvious thing here is the offense lost steam without Chubb. Part of it is not having Chubb in there and what he provides is just massive. Another part of it is they just fell out of rhythm, right? They're getting plays that are open, but either Deshaun's not finding them in time or he's hesitating or Elijah Moore is not catching them or we're getting a holding call or something like that. Like the opportunities to make plays were there for the Cleveland Browns. They just couldn't consistently execute on them. They were just out of sync the whole second quarter of this game once Nick Chubb went down. And that's one of the important things about a running back. He keeps the offense on on time in rhythm because one thing a good running back can do is get you five yards. And that does a lot for keeping an offense on time, on rhythm. So when people talk about how running backs don't matter anymore, that's why I get so frustrated with that conversation because like that, having that is so massive like just look at what the San Francisco 49ers are without Christian McCaffrey and with Christian McCaffrey and tell me that running backs don't matter like yeah if they if you can get have somebody who can get you five yards like pretty much a pop that dude is one of the most valuable pieces to the team I mean hell 
He might even be more valuable than your quarterback because the ability to create that kind of rhythm without like having to run a screen or or make your quarterback run or, or do all this gimmicky shit to try to get five yards is just so massive here. But let's talk about the third quarter, man. The defense was good in the first half. I thought they lost a little steam in the second half. Um, Jerome Ford comes back here at the top of the third quarter with a massive run that leads to a touchdown. Then Watson scrambles in for a sec, a two point conversion. And we, we feeling good, right? Um, then Maurice Hurst and, and Shelby Harris get a sack, take Pittsburgh out of field goal range. They punt. Now the Browns are starting to stack momentum. You know, Watson's running the ball real well here. Another thing that I feel like we have undersold since his injury is his ability to run the ball and how important it is. It really saves the Browns and extends a lot of drives there. So I'm looking forward to that part of his game being back next year once he's healthy or just that element being there at the quarterback position. Um, but you're not able to build the momentum that you want to on this drive because Watson's just not having a great night as a passer. Some of it is him just flat out missing. Some of it is him hesitating and not pulling the trigger. Some of it is bad decision making. And some of it is wide receivers not making plays. And some of it is bad protection. It is a cacophony of misfortune. Uh, for Deshaun Watson, right, that's leading up to this game. Because, you know, there are times where he makes some great throws and then Elijah Moore's out of bounds. Or there are times where he doesn't make the right throw and then it gets compounded because the wide receiver gets a drop and then, boom, you get an interception. Like, all of this stuff is just not really going his way. The best way I could describe it is it felt like a bad shooting night. For Deshaun Watson, like the same way you feel when your favorite basketball player just can't get any shots to drop is kind of what it felt like watching Deshaun Watson in this game. There are a number of reasons why the shots ain't dropping, but at the end of the day, the shots ain't dropping, man. And they just weren't in this one. Um, just Wyatt Teller, Elijah Moore, Deshaun Watson just could not play well at the same time at all in this game. Um, and then Watson gets this personal foul trying to extend the drive on a scramble. The Browns were like at the 51 yard line. They had a chance to convert and get into field goal range, but then you get that face mask penalty. It's a personal foul sets you back 15 yards. And last week we talked about how four drives won the Browns of the game, um, against Cincinnati. And I'm going to tell you this week how the Browns, basically missed like four straight opportunities on offense to take over this game, right? We're going to, that one just happened where they got the personal foul, a good chance to take over the game after you just got the long touchdown by Jerome Ford, right? You're on a similar track. You get a big stop by the defense. You're driving down the field. You're getting close into scoring range. Then you stall out, you blow field position with the penalty. So, okay. Defense goes out, does what the defense does, right? <laughs> you get a chance to stack drives against a rival. You really got to do it. And this is something that they did in Cincinnati. It's something that they would do in Baltimore, but they just didn't do in this game. Um, third and like the defense does his thing. Third and six comes up. Watson makes a huge throw to Coop. And that chemistry that Amari Cooper and Deshaun Watson had was real strong in this game. And I'm looking forward to what a full season with those two will look like. And now, you know, things starting to look good. Jerome Ford starting to take over this game. Three straight runs. Wait a minute. Ethan Posick gets called for a hold. Then on the play after that, Deshaun Watson Loses 25, well, not loses. Deshaun Watson gets a face mask, which means in two plays, I believe the Browns were at the 40 or 35-yard line. They In two plays, they lost 25 yards of field positioning. It takes a field goal off the board. Then Njoku fumbles on the, on the next play. So you don't even get good field position on a punt, right? Like you don't even get the chance to flip the field. And, you know, you waste the opportunity. You had an opportunity to take control of the game, take the lead, really grab momentum. You don't take that opportunity. You punt on it. Hell, you don't even punt on it. You fumble on it. And to me, that was it, right? Like when you miss that opportunity, 
that kind of told me that you just did not have it in you to win that game. Like you went from trying to win the game to hoping Pittsburgh does something to give you the game. Um, and I don't think that they ever really showed that they were going to be there. Right. Even the next few drives, that's where Deshaun Watson gets uh, sacked, strip sacked, and they score on that one. Even then, you're only down four points, right? You get two drives to come back on them. You do nothing with one. And then the other drive, you get down the field a little bit, but then you stall out and, you know, you're begging for a penalty call on Donovan Peoples-Jones that you don't get. And the game's over. Um, and that's how the Browns lost the game. They had so many opportunities to take advantage of the game, to swing momentum, and they just never capitalized on it. Fortunately for this team, it will be a rare time that they don't do that. But this was, in my opinion, one of their worst games of the season because, yeah, they had games where they lost by more or played worse technically. But this is a game that they had every reason to win. And they just didn't. And the reason they didn't win has nothing to do with their opponent and had everything to do with them. And those are wins or losses that are hard to accept, right? You just play a bad game one day is what it is. You play a game where you're still capable of winning, but it's you that gets in your own way. Well, then that's harder to, to take, in my opinion. But that's my thoughts on this one. Let me know what you think. Join me next Sunday for week three's rewatch versus Tennessee. That should be a fun one, right? It should be a nice change of pace. Y'all have a great day. Have a better night. Peace.